So I think one of the questions that we had um, asked before was which patients should go on the chest pain pathway versus being admitted to cardiology? Okay. Matt, do you want to kick us off? Sure. Uh, so chest pain pathway, typical chest, chest pain pathways are observation unit based algorithms for evaluating chest pain patients coming to the emergency department are supposed to be for low risk chest pain patients, meaning that they have a low risk of acute MI less than 5% and less than 10% for unstable angina. So, um, you know, you're not taking uh, patients that uh, have known coronary artery disease, patients that have ST changes, patients that have positive troponins. Those would not be low risk patients. The thing is, is that um, some patients that are very low risk chest pain patients have other diagnoses. So one of the common mistakes in chest pain observation medicine is to not rule out other things like PEs, dissections, pneumonias, those kind of things. So if you have another alternative diagnosis, then it's unlikely that your chest pain that you're coming in with is cardiac too. So most people coming in the ED don't have two simultaneous pathologies causing their chest pain. So our job as emergency physicians is to look for those alternative diagnoses, kind of like in PEs, you know, if you find something that's uh, if you find something that's other than a PE that's causing the patient's chest pain, then it's not a PE. Same thing with chest pain. We look for other things. If you find the pneumonia or PE, then it's not low risk cardiac chest pain. All right. Once you've done that, then you look to see are they low risk. So you can use risk factors. All right. I don't personally like risk factors all that much. You know that we were forced to use the Timmy score, which looks at risk factors. Um, but I don't think that that is a really helpful marker in most people. I think history is one of the best markers. So if you get somebody that has a typical sounding chest pain, not the classic kind of chest pain, which sounds exactly like angina, then those are people that are more likely to be low risk chest pain patients. Patients that have pain that has been going on for hours and hours and hours is also unlikely to be cardiac chest pain. Doesn't mean that it can't be related to your heart, but it's very unlikely to be unstable angina or acute MI. So those patients aren't necessarily um, needing the chest pain pathway kind of workup. And I think another key thing is, as Matt pointed out, you got to rule out this other stuff. Once you put someone on the chest pain pathway, you've kind of locked them in. Like their, their care is on rails now. They're not going to be like, oh, well, actually, it could be a PE or actually, you've got asthma and we didn't know that. Uh, they're not going to deviate from the, is this acute coronary syndrome or not, very easily. So there's heavy anchor bias, meaning that first thing that you attach to, it doesn't go away. This is also true of inpatients that you admit to cardiology. So if there's a question of, I don't know, maybe this guy's got a PE, maybe this is heart attack, whatever, you need to very clearly communicate that to whoever you end up admitting to, because otherwise they're going to say, oh, we're just going to get some tropes, and if they're all negative and maybe a stress test, we're going to discharge this patient home. And they, they could miss things like PE and other stuff like that if you don't communicate that fairly clearly. Absolutely. And so that's an excellent point about that anchor, because uh, if you put somebody on the chest pain pathway, for chest pain in particular, but for any, any of the other diagnoses, that's what they're getting evaluated for. And it's really hard for um, the nurses, the next person coming on, to work through a different, a different diagnosis that it comes up. So you get over there, and then the official read comes back on the chest X-ray as pneumonia. Most of the emergency physicians or the hospitalists that are carrying on are not either, either not going to see that diag extra diagnosis of pneumonia that may be causing the chest pain, or either they're not going to vary from the pathway that they're still going to get a stress test which it probably was the pneumonia that was causing the pain. What about a little bit higher risk patients? What about the patient that comes in with a, a very classic story that is, you know, on and off chest pain, it's with exertion, um, it uh, goes away when they rest, you know, is that a low risk chest pain? Well, in a lot of cases it is because if they don't have known coronary artery disease, you know, the chances that they're going to have a positive stress test are still very low. So in a lot of patients, even if they have very classic symptoms, it's still okay to evaluate them with the chest pain pathway. And why is that? It's because the chest pain pathway is very similar to what you get on the floor. And a lot of observation medicine things, you get better treatment in the observation unit than you get on the floor. So I can get a stress test faster in the observation unit than I could get on the floor. I can get more jet nebs quicker in the observation unit on the asthma pathway than I can get on the floor. So really it's an accelerated protocol that's done in an observation unit setting. So if you use that accelerated um, component of the pathway, it really can be for the patient's advantage. So if they got to the floor, it might be two days before they get a stress test, then you find out they have coronary artery disease, then they go for a cath. Whereas if you get the observation unit, you can get a stress test in 12 hours, then it's positive, then you can admit them to cardiology. So 
We typically take patients that have even a little higher risk than just low, patients with very classic stories. The only difference is, is if somebody comes in and they have known coronary artery disease, what's the chances that they have coronary artery disease? 100%, right? So if you're dealing with somebody with known coronary artery disease, that's when the history and risk factor, really not so much risk factor, but that's when the history starts making a big difference, right? Somebody with known coronary artery disease, they had a stent placed in their uh, left main two years ago, comes in, and they've got pain that comes on when they're walking down the block. The next day, it's walking to the mailbox. The next day, they come in and see you. You're probably going to say that the risk of that is a lot higher than 5 or 10% for unstable angina.